Ebola virus, the bacteria that causes plague, a pandemic strain of flu, if any of these pathogens could be turned into bioweapons by terrorists or rogue nation states, they would threaten humanity. Most life scientists have little awareness of biosecurity issues, according to a National Academies report released today. And it says there are multiple shortcomings in the systems designed to stop potentially risky research from being published. The left were those who were seen as progressive wanting to change, the right were seen as those wanting to conserve elements of the old regime. It's time for this young loggerhead turtle to go to work. We can tether turtles in these little cloth harnesses, put them into this tank and dull swimming place. University of North Carolina biologist Ken Lohman studies sea turtles that are programmed from birth for an extraordinary journey. Mother turtles buried the eggs on the beach and then returned to the sea, and the eggs hatch about 50 to 60 days later. A new process for 3D printing things could pave the way for lighter, faster aircraft that potentially fly further on the same amount of fuel. Today's airplanes are held together with thousands of metal rivets and fasteners. That's because the lightweight but strong aluminum alloys used for their frames are considered unwieldable. Try to weld them and you get a phenomenon called hot cracking, in which the finished alloy weakens and fractures as it cools. This and other adverse welding effects also stand in the way of 3D printing high-strength aluminum alloy parts. When researchers have tried, the resulting laser-fused mass flakes away at the welding area like a stale biscuit. Popular ride-sharing firm Uber has had its license to operate in London revoked in a surprise move by the city's regulator. There were multiple reasons for the decision. TfL cited the company's approach to reporting criminal offences. In August, a senior officer within London's Metropolitan Police Service wrote to TfL about Uber's slowness to report a passenger's accusation that her driver had sexually assaulted her. TfL said it was also concerned about how Uber obtained medical certificates and criminal records checks for drivers. All earthquakes look the same when they start, making it unlikely we will be able to predict which will cause the most devastation from early observations. Early warning systems rely on seismometers picking up tremors and sounding the alarm for nearby cities before major shaking starts. Even a few seconds warning can make a lot of difference, both for individual people and for organizations like hospitals. For example, Mexico's early warning system gave everyone a 10 to 15 second heads up before Tuesday's magnitude 7.1 earthquake. Another arm of the United States government was the FSA, the Farm Security Administration, and they had a peculiar task, 
because in addition to the depression, which had obviously hit farmers quite hard because suddenly the material that they were producing wasn't really as value, yet their costs for producing it were exactly the same, they were hit not only that but also by another problem which was the Dust Bowl. And the Dust Bowl was this terrible broad that hit the American West and Southwest especially, and caused terrible economic problems for those farmers. I'm going to argue that the tremendous increases in productivity that we associate with the Industrial Revolution originate not so much from changes in science or technology or new inventions, where England was far from unique as from changes in attitudes, attitudes towards morality, towards what constituted the good. Attitudes towards property, which became in England individuals long before it did on the continent. Attitudes toward the proper role of government. And together, these attitudes constitute much of what the Luddites were protesting against. We are trying to understand the locomotion of one of our closest living relatives, which is the orangutan, and also the locomotion of all of the apes and the common ancestor of humans and the other apes. And in that area, we have had a big problem traditionally, and that we know a lot about how they move around the forest. I've been out to the forest and spent a year recording the different types of locomotion they use, but we have no idea about the energetic cost of how they move around the forest and the solutions that they find to problems of moving around the canopy. Asteroid collisions can be, just ask the dinosaurs, but they also bring key ingredients for life. Super-Earths can draw them to nearby worlds. Super-Earths, planets that are up to ten times more massive than Earth, might play billiards with planetary systems. New simulations suggest that if a super-Earth existed in our own solar system, say between Venus and the Earth, far more asteroids would collide with us. But that isn't necessarily a bad thing if the timing is right. Understanding the effect of these massive planets on others nearby could help direct the search for life on exoplanets. If you have Paraskevodekatriophobia, today is not your day. That's right, Paraskevodekatriophobia is fear of Friday the 13th and the accidents, mishaps and misfortunes thought by some to occur on that day. But is there anything really to fear? In fact, a study was conducted and published back in 1993 in the British Medical Journal that looked at hospital admissions due to accidents on one Friday the 13th compared with the previous Friday the 6th. The researchers tracked traffic on a highway in one area. But hospital admissions in that area, due to traffic accidents, was actually higher. 45 people were admitted on the 6th, but 65 people were admitted on the 13th. The researchers concluded that a few people were indeed unlucky. 
on that Friday the 13th. In that part of England. Then again, what you really needed for this study was a control group that stays home, only to slip in the bathtub. It's tough to pick a familiar face out of a crowd, but focusing on a known voice in a noisy room is easy. And a new study scanned volunteers' brains to look at how we solve the so-called cocktail party problem. The work is in the journal Nature. Researchers recorded the activity of the subject's cerebral cortexes while playing them sentences spoken by different voices. First, the subjects listened to individual sentences and reported key features of each one. Then, they heard two different sentences played at the same time, but had to listen to and recall details from only one voice. Each voice drew a particular response from the auditory cortex. And even with an extra sentence playing simultaneously researchers saw that the cortex responded specifically to the voice that the subject was focusing on. This finding indicates that our brains process sound based not only on the audio input they received dash, but also on our listening goals. And it could lead to speech recognition systems that are accurate in crowds, even at a cocktail party. Obese people have higher risks for diabetes, heart disease, arthritis, and injuries in car accidents? Yes, in part because they're far less likely to wear a seat belt. That's the finding of a study out of the University of Buffalo that will be presented at an upcoming meeting of the Society for Academic Emergency Medicine in Chicago. The researchers analyzed data in the National Fatality Analysis Reporting System of the National Highway Traffic. The study included a third of a million drivers involved in fatal crashes. Two years ago, the research group found that morbidly obese people were 56% more likely to die in a car crash than normal weight car occupants. The new study revealed that drivers of normal weight are 67% more likely to wear a seat belt than are obese drivers, which could account for at least part of the increased death risk. The researchers hypothesize that overweight people find belts uncomfortable and difficult to buckle. A weight loss program can address the problem in the long run. An inexpensive seat belt extension can solve it today. Does your puppy turn his nose up at his own chow because he wants some of whatever it is that you're having? A new study finds that, when it comes to food, dogs recognize human social signals about what's good. The work is in the journal Public Library of Science 1. Researchers let pet dogs choose between two plates, one with a single piece of food and the other with six pieces. Unsurprisingly, the animals generally went for the larger portion. But when a human being showed a clear liking for the smaller plate, the canines likewise went for the skimpier choice.
Fantastic, if we'd done it and counted in the other way around and said that the stars were older than the universe, we would say science was in deep trouble. But it's not, everything fits together and we know how the universe began, we got to know how the way it is. The future that at LL suspects we don't know quite well what's going, but we got some ideas, which are as good as those ideas we had 40 years ago about how Big Bang happened. The dogs apparently recognized and responded to the humans' social cues. And not all cues were equally effective. When the human approached but did not touch the smaller portion, dogs ignored the attention-drawing gesture. For a social signal to influence behavior, it had to demonstrate intention. And the most effective cues also involved communication, such as looking from the food to the dog and back while talking encouragingly. For dogs, choosing a bite may depend on another's bark. Doctors know a lot about prescribing medications. Take two brisk walks and call me in the morning. But for many patients, a light get moving plan might be just what the doctor should have ordered. Many of us aren't exactly in peak physical condition. But a large number of people are actually deconditioned. So says the Mayo Clinic's Michael Joyner in an essay in the Journal of Physiology. After surgery, illness, pregnancy, or extended inactivity, for any reason, people might feel faint or fatigued when they try even mild exercise. These signs, Joyner argues, should be recognized by doctors not as symptoms that should be treated with drugs, but rather as a medical state of deconditioning that might be better helped with a gentle, guided exercise program. It might sound counterintuitive that fatigue can be beat back with exercise. But remember Newton, Isaac, not Fig, a body at rest stays at rest. And a body in motion needs to resist external forces acting upon it that might slow it down.